We're going to go live right now to Queen's Park, where Education Minister Stephen Lecce is making an announcement. Good morning. Yeah, it, pleased to be here with Parliamentary Assistant Patrice Barnes to share some good news for Ontario families and for our students. For the first time in nearly a generation, Ontario's government has successfully negotiated agreements with all of the province's teacher unions, thereby averting strikes or the withdrawal of services over the next three years. Last night and early into the morning, we reached a tentative central agreement with OECTA, the Catholic Teachers Union. If ratified, it will ensure that there will be no province-wide job, job action or strikes by teachers in all English language, French publicly funded schools for the next three years. The OECTA tentative agreement applies to more than 36,000 full-time educators and over 570,000 students. From the very beginning of these negotiations, we set out a singular focus on keeping kids learning in class. We wanted kids to stay in school where they could enjoy the full educational experience from the extracurriculars, the, the clubs and sports. And we know that by teaching, by keeping kids learning in class without any disruption or threats, we are restoring the much needed focus on academics and protecting the important routine that kids have established every day. This year has been one of learning and recovery, a year of getting back to the basics. And EQAO results show that we are moving on the right track. For this alone, we have reason to celebrate, but there's more work to do. And more than two million children, every single child in a publicly funded school in Ontario can now look forward to civility in their lives, which fulfills a promise we made to parents to protect their child's routine, to keep them learning in their class where we know they belong. And so I want to sincerely thank Ontario's teachers and education workers for the important work they do every single day. I want to thank Patrice Barnes for her leadership. I want to thank our negotiating team led by Assistant Deputy Minister Andrew Davis. And most of all, I want to thank Ontario parents and students for standing with us as we've worked hard to keep kids in class. Thank you. Look, we are pleased we got to the finish line. It provides stability for families. Uh, over 500,000 kids will benefit from this agreement. Obviously, our government was committed to getting deals much earlier, uh, but I'm just pleased I'm going to focus on the result, not necessarily the process. Uh, we got this done, and we're providing stability for families. We're keeping kids in school, focus on academic achievement. That is a good thing, and obviously, you know, uh, I think all parties can have a sense of relief that uh, their members and our kids are going to be staying in school for the next three years. So is there anything much different in this deal that we're going to deal with at that over or what um, was this yet? It's before ratification. What I can say is it's a similar framework to them all, and it used the same dispute resolution mechanism of sending it to a binding arbitration. For many of the education unions, they didn't love that concept at first, and they've come on board over time. And I'm pleased that they have sort of accepted this premise that, look, we're, we in good faith can't agree on every single item. We have a credible, independent system that can, um, that can um, uh, render decisions that are fair for all the parties. And so I'm just focused on stability. We've achieved it today uh, for Catholic children, frankly, for all children, our French and English, Catholic and public. Every single student in this province finally has a sense of peace. The last time this, this type of, um, uh, that, that type of stability has been achieved, you have to go back to 2008. So it's been quite a long time that families have had years of peace. And we are restoring that sense of focus on academics, a sense of hope and um, stability in the classroom, and everyone will benefit from that. Is salary one of the issues that's going to arbitration um, uh, It is certainly was an, a matter, an outstanding matter at the table. And uh, like many of the other unions that have uh, accepted uh, this process, uh, salary was one of the concerns. Uh, we'll utilize the process before us. Uh, to uh, get to get to a, a resolution. We have total confidence in that process. At the end of the day, our mission was keeping children in school and being reasonable and focused and student-centric. That's why we thought it would be fair to propose to the union uh, sending all outstanding matters to interest arbitration. It's now you worked for every single teacher union to date, and I think it's an effective model in this round uh, that keeps these kids in school. And that's the number one priority for the Premier, for our government, was stability for families. And we are achieving that. Kids have routine. They can look forward to years of peace in the classroom. Uh, and that is the achievement of uh, an outcome that I know every child will benefit from. So the arbitration for teachers, I don't think it's something we had seen before this round. Um, and I know the next round will come after the next election.
question, but you know, looking ahead, is it something that you think will stick, should stick for future rounds? Look, it worked in this round, and I'm not going to prejudice future ones other than just to simply say uh, we all have to come around the table with a focus on keeping these kids in school. After years of difficulty, this matters today, and it would matter in the future too. So um, it was an effective way to reach a deal that provided stability for families and kept kids in school. That's what we're focused on. Uh, and I think certainly it can be um, uh, it can be a system used in the future, but I you know that'll be a decision for the government of the day and the Minister of Education of the day. Unfortunately, I just I, I'm not I, I want to respect the process of ratification. OECTA may be posi better positioned to answer that if they're comfortable. Uh, but in our system, uh, we want to maintain confidence, allow the members to make a decision uh, independent of. Uh, political commentary, and so what I'd simply say is I appreciate that the leadership has accepted a union, uh, an agreement with us that keeps kids in school. I will have confidence in them to administer a uh, ratification process. The other unions that have ratified their deals have been upwards of 80 percent, really strong mandates, and so we look forward to seeing the result of this one too. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Jake. Go ahead. Um, just on another topic, uh, uh, Jamil Devani, who was an advisor. In his speech, he said that liberal elites are betraying the working people of this country, including uh, the liberal elites who are the Ontario Ministry of Education in this province. Um, are you a liberal elite minister? Uh, I'm uh, a minister focused on getting deals, um, and that's what I've done today. And I want to celebrate the fact that kids are in school. Uh, go ahead. Minister, um, several school boards have started suspending kids that are up to date on immunizations. Um, there's immunization rates, particularly for, for measles, that right. have plummeted recently. Uh, but there's still loopholes where, where parents can get their kids out of mandatory vaccination. Should those loopholes be closed, considering that we have the potential for severe measles outbreaks in this country? Mm -hmm. I know we have very high rates of immunization for those uh, uh, for those types of vaccines, including for measles. That is a good thing. I know public health agencies are continuing to promote uh, families to uh, get their children immunized. Uh, I think the requirement, as I understand under the uh, under the law, is that students must disclose their immunization records. Um, and I know that there's a great deal of effort to ensure that parents are transparent with school boards. Part of the way by which they can limit any potential harm uh, to classrooms if there ever is um, uh, the spread of these uh, uh, of these diseases. So uh, I will obviously continue to support the work of public health to encourage families to get their kids immunized according to the best available evidence to reduce uh, very uh, severe impacts of, 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 of like like measles, which of course, as we all know, uh, can be very serious to children. But health experts are saying that there's not enough. There's not a high rate of immunization to prevent prevention, prevention over. We have a very... So shouldn't you really cracking down on, yeah. on, on this now? Like it seems simple to somebody mm -hmm. from my generation that, that everybody got two shots and they were happy. Yeah, I mean, we still have very high rates of immunization uh, in Ontario amongst those essential, um, for those essential um, vaccines. That's important. Uh, and I know public health in every region of Ontario, including for the Chief Medical Officer of Health, all the way down to local public health units, are working to continue to promote the responsible uh, increasing positive rates of immunization. But uh, look, schools play a role in creating those cultures and encouraging that activity with parents and we're going to continue to encourage families to take responsible action to protect their children from very serious disease. Are you open to having a, uh, a measles shot drive in schools? Those are decisions of public health, and I'll defer to public health on uh, the, the mechanisms by which they consider it, uh, higher rates of immunization. So, you, uh, it sounds like you've gotten every single um, teachers union to agree to binding arbitration, even though initially they all said they would fight to the nail against right. this. Um, why do you think they had that change of mind? I think, um, you know, look, I, I, I'm a big believer in focusing on the results. Uh, we had to move them along. Uh, this was a different proposal brought forward to them. It's certainly not unprecedented. We do it in other sectors of the, of the public service. 
I'm just happy that, you know, while it may have taken a bit longer than I would have preferred, I'm just pleased that we got this done for families so we keep these kids in school providing routine and stability. That is what matters. Uh, and I think the membership of the unions also, their voices matter too. And I think overwhelmingly educators want to teach in school. They don't want to be in a picket line. They want to provide uh, academics. Uh, they want to inspire kids around the curriculum and focus on academic achievement. So I think between families, the voices of the members, and uh, obviously the conviction of our government, we stood up strong to make sure that we could land these deals that provide some sense of constituting the life of a child, and we've delivered it. That was our commitment. And the last time this was done was before 2008, when a government signed deals with all unions, teacher unions, where we averted any strike or withdrawal of service at the provincial or local level. So that's a great achievement. It's good for families. And we're just elated that we can deliver this good news for kids so that their kids can look forward to learning recovery and really restoring the sense of hope common sense and the opportunity we want back in Ontario's publicly funded schools. Do you have any idea of how much there's going to be in the budget for uh, salary increases since you seem to be uh, sending every salary uh, negotiation to arbitration? You can't know what those increases are going to be. How are you going to budget for it? Um, certainly uh, the Ministry of Finance will uh, uh, factor in uh, those considerations and bring forth a fiscal framework that I think is responsible. Uh, we'll wait for the budget uh, uh, to see what comes of, uh, of that. But I think what our priority was simply to respect the workers, our teachers, which we've done, but most particularly, most importantly, respect the right of kids that they can be in school every day without disruption. We've achieved both imperatives, which frankly is good for all. Okay, thank you so much. We've been listening to Education Minister Stephen Lecce announcing a tentative deal between uh, the province and uh, the Ontario English Catholic Teachers Association. Also going on to uh, highlight the fact that the province has also secured deals uh, with pretty much all English and French language schools uh, for the next three years.